Good morning everyone. Today our group going to present mechanism of blood flow through heart and lungs. Here is our group members name. First we focus on structure of heart and lungs. Our body is divided by pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. Pulmonary circulation is heart pump blood to lungs. Therefore, systemic circulation is the blood is supplied from heart to the rest of the body. Heart contains four chambers which known as right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. Heart contains valve which prevent backward flow of blood. In lungs, capillary bed which consists of artery play an important role in gases exchange. Next, structure of urinary system. Urinary system is made up of two kidney, two ureter, one urinary bladder and one urethra. What is the interrelationship between cardiovascular system, respiratory system and urinary system? Before that, let's we focus on blood flow through lungs to heart and back. Oxygenated blood from lungs will pass through pulmonary vein and enter left atrium. By speak, valve will open and blood enter left ventricle. Iotic seminular valve is open due to high pressure in left ventricle. Left ventricle pump oxygenated blood to aorta and rest of the body such as kidney. Then deoxygenated blood carried to right atrium through vena cava. Triscuspid valve open. Blood enter right ventricle. Right ventricle pump blood to lung through pulmonary arteries. Once pulmonary seminula valve is open. Here is how blood flow throughout our body. Electrocardiograms are known as ECG. So what is ECG? ECG is a diagnostic tool that is routinely used to assess the electrical and muscular functions of the heart. So this is the normal ECG wave. The first ECG representation is P wave, represents the depolarizations of the left and right atrium and also corresponds to atrial contraction. Normal P wave is smooth and rounded, no more than 2.5 mm tall, and the normal duration is less than 0.11 second. Next is Keras complex, represent the electrical impulse as it spread through the ventricles and indicate the ventricular depolarization and start just before ventricular contraction and the normal duration will be between 0.06 and 0.10 second. D wave represent the ventricular repolarizations with follow ventricular depolarization and the normal T is slightly asymmetry. The P of the wave is a little closer to its and that's to its beginning. And normally follow the same direction as QR complex that preceded it. If the T wave does not follow the same direction as QR complex, it commonly shows some cardiac pathology. PR interval reflect the time interval from start of arterial depolarization to start of ventricular depolarization and also reflect with the impulse conductions from the arterial to the ventricle is normal and the normal durations will be between 0.12 to 0.20 second. QT interval reflect the total durations of ventricular depolarizations and repolarization and normal duration is less than or equal to 0.40 second for male while for female is 0.44 second. ST segment represent the early phase of ventricular repolarization and the normal ST segment is isoelectric slanting outward to T wave can be slightly elevated and then will normally depress greater than 0.5 mm in any lead. PR segment reflect the tiny delay between atria and ventricular activation, self after baseline also known as reference line or isoelectric line of the EC curve and it is electrically neutral. Next, we will go to the physiological changes in breathing at high altitude. 
At high altitude, the environment is different compared to the sea level. At sea level, as air is compressible, the weight of air above is compressing the air around us and making it denser. At a high altitude, oxygen is thinner and its level in the blood is decreases. Thus, it causes a problem to our heart. For humans, in order to survive at high altitude, we need to acclimatize. Acclimatize is a condition where we become accustomed to a new climate or new condition. In other words, that change occur in the body so that it can cope with shortage of oxygen. Breathing at high altitude At high altitude, we breathe faster and deeper or hyperventilate. It is necessary to do this in order to survive. Lungs expose blood to fresh air. Breathing faster increases flow of fresh air throughout the body. This means that whenever an oxygen molecule is taken away by the blood, it is quickly replaced by the fresh one, so more oxygen available to be taken up into blood. Carbon dioxide is produced by body and lungs remove it by diffuse it to the air. Hyperventilating increases the rate of air flow, causing the rate of carbon dioxide loss increase. Adaptation of cardiovascular system to high altitude The initial response to altitude is by increase in cardiac output with tachycardia. As we all know that tachycardia means that heart beat more than 100 times per minute. So no change in stroke volume, blood pressure slightly increase. After a few days of acclimatization, cardiac output is normal, but heart rate increased and stroke volume decreased. Ventricular function maintained with initially increased cause slightly depressed indices of systole function and an altered diastole feeling pattern. Feeling pressure of the heart remain unchanged, so that is why we can cope and survive even though we are at high altitude environment. Hypoxia is the oxygen deficiency at the tissue level or the inability to use oxygen. Hypoxia causes pulmonary arterioles to constrict and is much greater in some parts of the lungs. One of the types of hypoxia is hypoxia hypoxia. Hypoxia hypoxia zia, is a problem in normal individuals at high altitude. At 10,000 feet above sea level, the partial pressure of oxygen is about 60 mmHg. The causes of hypoxia hypoxia are decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the air, weak respiratory muscles, depression of the respiratory center, and ventil ventilation perfusion imbalance. There are many effects of hypoxia. One of them is cyanosis. Cyanosis occurs when reduced hemoglobin is more than 5 gram per deciliter that causing a bluish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane. Next is dyspnea. Dyspnea is the difficult, difficult in reading and the last effect is hypopnea. Hypopnea is the increase in the rate and depth of breathing. However, the effects depend on the types of tissues. In hypoxia hypoxia, the first organ to be affected is brain. When a reduced PO2 is less than 20 mmHg, it, it will cause loss of consciousness within 20 seconds and death within 4 to 5 minutes. Next, we focus at high pressure. At high pressure, the pressure increases by 180 m for every 10 meter of depth in seawater and every 10.4 meter in fresh water. It means that a diver is exposed to 480 m pressure if they are diving at a depth of, of 30 meter in the ocean. As we know, carbon dioxide is removed in scuba diving. 20% of oxygen or less is reduced as 100% of oxygen can bring harm to diver. As a diver breathing 80% of nitrogen essence from a dive, nitrogen diffuses from the tissues into the lungs along the partial pressure gradient. If the essence is rapid, nitrogen escapes from a solution and bubbles are formed in blood and tissues. This causes symptoms of decompression sickness. Bubbles in tissues cause a severe pain around the joints. Meanwhile, bubbles in the bloodstream obstruct the arteries to brain, to brain and spinal cord. If you are planning to go traveling to high altitude environment, please stay hydrated and always take breaks. Always prepare for the altitude and know about the physiology changes at high altitude. Next, if you have a heart disease, 
You are not recommended to exercise at high altitude. And lastly, please stay conditioned and in shape. Now we will go to the effect of one system to other organs of a system. In the next slides, we will discuss about how cardiovascular system, respiratory system, and urinary system affect each other. So, how cardiovascular system affect respiratory system? Firstly, the blood pick up oxygen from the lungs and releases carbon dioxide to be exhaled from the body through respiratory system. Low capillary blood pressure and blood on cortic pressure keep alveolar of lung from being filled up with fluid. If both of this pressure is high, the probability of alveoli to be filled up with fluid also increase and the gas exchange will affect it. Next, in urinary system, urine production begins when blood are filtered at kidneys. Most water and desirable solutes are reabsorbed back to the body through capillaries at kidneys, while waste like urea and uric acid and also extra water are excreted through urine. Blood pressure can maintain renal function. If blood pressure is high, blood vessels can constrict and narrow, thus damage them throughout body including kidneys. Next, respiratory system can affect urinary system whereby Valsalva maneuver which is a breathing technique aids in urination. This is possible because intra-abdominal pressure is raised, thus help in urine outflow. Urinary system and respiratory system collaborate in acid-base balance and compensate for each other's deficiencies. Instead, both of the system will work together to and complete each other to maintain the normal pH. Hypoxia stimulate kidneys to secrete EPO. Hypoxia is a condition whereby the oxygen in tissues are not enough. Next, thoracic pump during inspiration aids the venous return of blood. Angiotensin II that produced in the lungs stimulate vessel constriction and helps regulate blood volume and pressure. Respiration strongly influences blood pH. For example, hyperventilation or excessive deep breathing can increase blood pH due to decrease of carbon dioxide concentration in blood. Obstruction of pulmonary circulation can lead to right-sided heart failure. Lungs filter blood clots and emboli to prevent them from obstructing vital arteries elsewhere. Lastly, the effect of urinary system on respiratory system and cardiovascular system. Acid-base imbalance that may cause by renal dysfunction might affect respiratory rhythm. Kidneys uh, affect blood pressure more than any other organs. Low in blood pressure stimulate kidneys to secrete renin that, call, that can regulate blood pressure back to normal through renin angiotensin system or RAS system. Renal dysfunction can cause electrolyte imbalance that affect cardiac rhythm.